A very good afternoon to everybody. I assume all of you can uh, hear me well. Now I'm going to share about data science in atten attention economy, right? So briefly, that's uh, the title that I put in, slightly modified from original title that I have, because I want to bring in and share with you the importance of data science in this attention economy. And I'll be briefly sharing with you the recommender system that we are using today for end-to-end -end deployment um, as I present and um, in the next couple of slides. So today, what I, I like this report by um, Berkeley Economic Review, right? So what they are saying is uh, we have huge amount of information or data, but what is lacking is attention. Thus, it is very important as a data scientist or a data engineer or as an ML uh, engineer that you're working, how do you ensure you answer the business needs where the business needs are bring, make, making sure that you bring the right information uh, within the fingertips of the user of your application. It could be any type of application that you're looking at so that they can make the right decision within fraction of seconds. Right? So that's the most important part of today's or challenge of AI and ML data scientists and researchers to ensure they're able to answer the business question. Right, and uh, given attention is is the most important, and we want to make sure the users of whatever application that you are developing, whatever solution that you are developing, whatever product that you are designing, able to accept it. And uh, based on a report by McKinsey Analytics, um, published in 2021, almost 56 organizations are already adopting AI in production. So this is very very big difference and what we have seen maybe about five years ago. Uh, in fact, a year ago, it was less than 50%. Uh, today, it is 56%. So the adoption rate is increasing. Now, what do we do as a data scientist? Uh, if you look at it, this is the uh, standard hierarchy of needs that we have. As we ingest data from various sources, uh, we ensure the data is reliable. Uh, through whichever practices that we used to adopt, right? It is just to be part of the uh, big data practices that has been there for almost 15, 20 years. And all the way top of the pyramid is the AI and deep learning algorithm that we're actually using. These algorithms that we design and we implement, in fact, is going to solve the problem that we are looking at, which is the allowing the user or uh, the adapter of the AI solution to make a decision within fraction of second. Now, this is the challenge of data scientists working as a team together with the ML engineers, uh, uh, deep ops uh, team members, data engineers, and so forth, right? So while we aggregate a lot of data sets and we move the data that we collect along the way so that it is ready for model training, the model that we design and develop, it has to meet the business need so that we can actually allow the end user to make a decision. Now, this is the whole cycle uh, that we have seen from NVIDIA perspective, working with many of our uh, designers, uh, ML designers, or DL designers, model designers, and so forth. So having said that, the, the pyramid that you have seen, the bottom is where a lot of data is available, and the tip of the pyramid is where the actual uh, most important work, crucial work being done. And from uh, all our activities, we have seen a lot of time being wasted by the data scientist or the ML ops team or DL ops team, data engineering team. So from this observation, we found out the inefficient usage of certain tools or inefficient uh, architecture of certain uh, architecture that they're actually using today in terms of the compute or in terms of organizing the data that they have and how they're actually bringing it together to a data scientist team who can then use the data in order to design a model. So in order to remove this, uh, you know, the red color of the uh, chart actually shows time being wasted by the data science team. We wanted to accelerate the entire uh, life cycle of activities uh, in terms of bringing a useful model. So what we have done is uh, we observe the entire workflow uh, which is undertaken by DL engineers or ML engineers. If you can see, as a, 
as a first stage at the bottom of the pyramid is where data engineers come in they extract they transform they load etl and then a lot of uh, activity in terms of uh, feature engineering being done and after that is data scientists actually start uh, looking at training the model and one is that one is the model is ready it passed to the developer so that they can integrate into actual application and then the devops comes in in order to put the pieces together so this is such a long time and in some cases it takes three to six months to get a useful and a business objective meeting ai model to be deployed so we want to accelerate this to almost double the the speed so that we want to make sure the whole process can be made much easier. So what we have done is at the bottom, if you can see, we containerize it, we provide a pre-trained models, and then we have many frameworks or application SDKs so that they can actually easily deploy in a specific environment. And what we have seen is over a period of time, the last uh, five to six years, the SDKs has to be industry specific. DL and ML is not any more a generic uh, operation that to be performed. It is industry specific. If it is a designing a model, uh, for example, in terms of medical imaging, totally different than designing a model for recommendation engine. So it is a vertical specific. So NVIDIA has developed many design, uh, many uh, SDKs and platforms so that it can be applied on a vertical specific issues. Now, all these uh, models uh, the con which is which has been containerized and also uh, we have all the uh, industry application frameworks and together with other tools it could be helm chart or collection of other sdks has been put together in ngc so that you can download and use it right i'm going to share with you one example of uh, uh, recommendation engine for uh, application area of per personalization of uh, shopping so what do you need to do what we have how we've accelerated is you can trick the pre-trained model from ngc you train with your localized data set that you have collected in your organization and then use the tools which is available for example tau tensor rt and triton which is basically to optimize the model and then you deploy and here is just a model cut, which I share with you. There are many different type of models. It could be uh, image specific models. It could be uh, conversational AI type of models, which is ASR, TTS, and STT, or it could be recommendation engine specific models and so forth. There is about almost 100 plus models available for different verticals, which you then you can utilize in order to design and develop your own application. Now, how do we accelerate the whole cycle? Uh, from NVIDIA, what we do is we ensure all the models that we pre-train, make it available, all the SDKs and framework, whether it's a PyTorch, TensorFlow, Keras, Kaldi, it is all optimized to run on a GPU using all the AI cores and Tensor cores. If you can see over a period of time, uh, within a year, each and every SDK that we provide has been accelerated because of the software optimization that we have in order to run the AI models. Uh, this is a video clip, but I won't be sharing the video clip. Actually, you can go to the NGC, you can look at a model cut, and the model cut will share with you how the model actually easily can be downloaded and used. And even we provide you easy way to test the model even in NGC itself by uploading your own data set. A small amount of data set, you can see the model being inferred or executed at NGC. Now, this is in a simple pipeline. Uh, using our Merlin SDK for recommendation engine pipeline. So using the same principle and methodology, you can actually download a specific SDK in this called Merlin SDK from NGC. It does the ETL operation. It actually has a NV tabler in order to do data loading. It has uh, incorporation of PyTorch, TensorFlow, whichever framework that you want to use in order to train your uh, specific model. Um, and we provide our own uh, integrated framework, which is uh, we call huge CTR, which is uh, click through rate using PyTorch as the backend. And uh, the model has been pre trained and provided for you so that it can automatically load and you can do the feature engineering easily. And the once is, uh, uh, it has been validated, next you can easily deploy using a uh, Triton backend uh, so that your, uh, your application can able to handle. A high throughput of inference execution to be done so that the within the fraction of millisecond you could execute your recommendation engine uh, where you may have tens of millions of uh, users are coming in and browsing into your specific website 
right? Um, this is a bit of details of how uh, Merlin engine has been designed. I won't go into details, but this is a workflow where I use NVTabler, huge CTR click to rate, and then Triton in order to have the whole cycle of um, application to be deployed. And uh, this is another example of visualization, how NVTable actually can scale, not only on a uh, multi GPU, which is eight GPUs in a, in a box, we call as a DGX, but it can uh, go across multiple DGXs into hundreds of DGXs in order to support the scale of deployment that you have for large operations. For example, in the case of super apps, right? And this is the uh, details of the code. Uh, which you can actually, uh, uh, the code is available. If you look at it, NGC there, uh, you can go to the specific link. The, the slide will be made available to you. You can use the slides and um, with a specific link that is made available so that you can actually download the uh, framework and applications and model so that you can execute. This is another representation of a simple uh, 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 illustration of the code, which is written as part of the NV tabler. Uh, if you have written your code in uh, uh, scikit-learn, for example, you just can, by changing three lines of code or three code, three components of the code, you can get this executed using GPU by using QML library. Nothing different than uh, scikit-learn is basically is a code that we have ported into GPU. Now, this is another component is called a uh, transformer for right, which is specifically being used for transformer uh, recommendation engine building, where you can do a feature engineering and also imp uh, deployment can be done for recommendation engine uh, using this uh, specific work. Again, this is a work has been done by Meta and NVIDIA has actually ported implemented for implementation. And the whole solution can be uh, deployed in AI enterprise uh, ready environment by using our suite. And this is just a simple guide that you can use it for you to get started where you get uh, relevant information uh, and uh, start your simple deployment and experiment. So with that, thank you very much. Um, and then there will be a technology conference which is coming up in March. You can join in. There will be 800 sessions talking about various technology. So with that, uh, I think it's time for questions. Thank you, Dr. Karobia, for your presentation today and for sharing with us. Uh, we already have a few questions coming from the audience, and we can take a couple of questions that we got. Uh, the first question is a very interesting one. Um, do you think that ES, uh, ML engineers, data engineers, DevOps, uh, and then also ML ops teams are the right way to structure analytics team? Are they uh, the right roles or are anything is needed? that's the question so uh, if you look at it from my experience working with uh, you know many companies uh, it could be startups and also big companies um, as, as I shared in the pyramid structure the uh, the ML ops teams have a specific role to play uh, DL ops team has a different specific uh, work to play while the data scientist team actually have a role in terms of designing and architecting the model and ensuring the right accuracy so when the team is being set up, uh, the right uh, role should be given to the right team members, right? Um, so that the business problem statement translation is being done uh, by the data scientists. And from there, the workflow goes to, uh, to, the, uh, to the data engineers and also people who are managing the data. And ML ops and, and, and DL ops teams uh, comes in where in terms of deployment, in terms of optimization and in terms of productization of the model. So based on the, uh, uh, I would call job specification, the teams should be structured. I see. So that kind of dichotomy is already uh, for the right structure for the analytics team then? Yeah. I see. Okay. And then moving on to the second questions. Um, the question is, if you don't have a big data problem, but many models problem to solve, is this the framework, is this framework appropriate too? Yeah, so if you look at it, this is a very common problem, right? So you have small data set. Uh, for some of the uh, problem set or some of the domain, you may not have big data set. Um, so in that case, if, if it is a general problem, if it is only your specific organization problem, then I would suggest you need to collaborate with somebody who has a data set, then you can work with them. But if it is a general industry issue, then for example, in the case of NVIDIA, we work very closely with the different partners 
um, we do distributed uh, uh, or federated learning in terms of training our model. We make a model available. So when if we are building a recommendation engine and one of it could be a, a voice uh, search engine, right? So for example, we have a Riva platform. Our ASR, TTS and NLP component out of the box can give you almost, uh, you know, close to 90% of accuracy. Uh, for a specific languages so when, then you need to have a local data set to train so i'm working with somebody in in thailand who has only 2000 hours of data they have collected to record for their language uh, while nvidia has collected millions of hours from our work so six million hours versus only 2000 hours so by pre-training our model over 2000 hours of data set they are getting about 96 percent of accuracy, error rate is less than three, uh, about three, three point five uh, percent in terms of word error rate. That's how you can leverage, even you have a small data set. Got it, got it, got it. I think we have uh, a time for the last question. Uh, the the third question is that uh, do SDKs limit what a practitioner can do in any way? Are there limitations or things that you then can uh, later cost to customize? Sure. So I, I would suggest uh, look at the uh, structure of the SDK. Open SDKs are always the better model of working. And in fact, uh, as, as a developer, I like the GitHub code, which gives me total flexibility to work on. But uh, another ch the challenge which comes along is the, the far end, it's very open. Uh, the contrib code contributors, the cleanliness of the code, maintenance of the code, and integrity of the code, and time taken for you to harden it and deploy, it, it's, it becomes uh, further difficult, right? Uh, while on the other hand, when you look at some of the SDKs where it's very structured and you have active community working together and it's been uh, well tested and deployed in industry, that gives you short time to uh, develop and deploy. So I would suggest you should take a look at the freedom of using versus time that you have in your project should be a balance factor to decide. Got it, got it. Yeah, okay then, I think that's all. Uh, Dr. Karupia, thank you again uh, for the presentation and the answers. Now, uh, I'd like to invite our next speaker, Professor Yang Yu from National University of Singapore to present Colossal AI, an efficient deep learning system. Thank you for joining us today and without Thank further you for ado, having me here. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Krapia.